Data pipelines come in many different forms. The term is broad and covers any process of moving a large amount of data from one place to another. We present here is a general version of it, but this is by no means the only way to implement an effective data pipeline. Hey guys, today we're looking into what is the data pipeline and why is it so popular by Byte Byte Go, a video that I think is very important because data pipelines, everybody's talking about them, but what are they? I'm excited. A link to the original video is in the description and let's get into it. Today, we're diving into the world of data pipelines. So what exactly is data pipeline? In today's data-driven world, companies collect massive amounts of data from various sources. This data is critical for making informed business decisions and driving innovation. Mm -hmm. So here, what do we see? Kafka, basically a stream, an API. This is all, uh, I'm guessing this is a database, a file. The Hadoop thing here, I, I don't know if we need this anymore, but like, okay. However, raw data is often messy, unstructured, and stored in different formats across multiple systems. Okay. Data collector. You have a stream coming, for instance, from Kafka. You have change data capture, where if you have a database and something changes, um, you will get a information about this, or you have a batch process where you take the data and put it somewhere. Right? You take your file, do something with it, and then store it somewhere. Raw object storage landing areas. Okay, okay. So from the source to some kind of landing area. Data pipelines automate the process of collecting, transforming, and delivering data to make it usable and valuable. Okay, ETL transformer. Yes, not necessarily. Right now, people are also doing ELT, where they load instead of transform it. But what, what, so what's, once you transform it, where do you load it? Curated data lakes, Spark platform, so into a data lake, conformed data warehouses. I think there's also missing some like uh, transactional stuff here. It's, it's normal database. Not everything needs to be a data lake or a Spark platform or something uh, that hyped up. It can be a, a typical SQL database. And then what are people doing? Data science, AI, ML from this, BI and analytics from this. Okay, okay. yep, yep. Because you take the data, and these are the consumers. They take the data from the data lake and do data science with and create um, or train models with AI and ML. Okay, yeah. And then the BI people, the analytics people are sitting here. Data pipelines come in many different forms. The term is broad and covers any process of moving a large amount of data from one place to another. Mm, yes, origin, database, management, files, batch processing, real-time pipelines. Staging, extract ETL, staging, transform it, put it into a warehouse. I think this is a, a pretty um, traditional use case of, okay, we're going the analytics route for the data analysts. Data is transformed as it's generated and then put it into basically a staging area or, or into the cloud. Data flows between the source and the destination into analytics. Okay. We present here is a general version of it, but this is by no means the only way to implement an effective data pipeline. Mm -hmm. Broadly speaking, a data pipeline has these stages, collect, mm -hmm. ingest, store, compute, and consume. The order of these stages can switch based on the type of data, but they generally have them. Let's start at the top with data collection. Imagine mm -hmm. we're working for an e-commerce giant like Amazon. We get data flowing in from multiple sources, data stores, data streams, and applications. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Well, these applications, where do they send the data? Um, maybe into a stream or into a store. So, yes. But of course, you're going to get the data from somewhere. Data stores are databases like MySQL, Postgres, or DynamoDB, where transaction records are stored. For instance, every user registration, order, and payment transaction goes to these databases. Yep. Data streams capture live data feeds in real time. Think of tracking user clicks and searches as they happen using tools like Apache Kafka or Amazon Kinesis. Or exactly. These are pretty cool use cases. And I think a lot of people can understand that. You click on the website, you do a transaction or something. This will happen. The data will get sent into some kind of a stream processing framework or into a message queue here. 
uh, more message queue, and then it will be processed later. Or data coming in from IoT devices. Yep. With all That's something I've worked on for many years from IoT devices, Internet of Things, where d uh, devices are out there on the internet, and they're going to send you the data over. These diverse data sources. The next stage is the ingest phase, where data gets loaded into the data pipeline environment. Depending on the type of data, it could be loaded directly into the processing pipeline or into an mm -hmm. intermediate event queue. Yep. Tools like Apache Kafka or Amazon Kinesis are commonly used for real-time data streaming. Data from databases is often ingested through batch processing or change data capture tools. After ingesting, the data may be processed immediately or stored first, depending on the specific use cases. Yeah, so these the the idea with having these message queues in there, usually they allow also multiple consumers to listen to the data and process the data at once, right, or in parallel. So that's something where people, why people always use, or often use these types of message queues, yeah. And from there it goes to compute and then it goes to storage. Here, it makes sense to explain two broad categories of processing batch processing and stream processing. Nice. Batch processing involves processing large volumes of data at scheduled intervals. This doesn't need to be Spark here, right? Doesn't need to be Spark. Let's say you have a Python script and you run that Python script on a schedule every hour. It's already a batch process. Apache Spark with its distributed computing capabilities is key here. Other pop... Uh, well, people, you know, people are often going... They're, they're talking about these big things to, to, to show this Spark. Spark is a streaming and a batch processing framework, so you can do both. I think it's a bad example here. Uh, the, the easiest example is just you have a Python script and you share this script. Done. Popular batch processing tools include Apache Hadoop MapReduce and Apache Hive. No, no longer. Like, who's doing MapReduce? Nobody. For instance, Spark jobs can be configured to run nightly to aggregate daily sales data. Stream processing handles real time. I think they 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 mixed up here a bit too much Hadoop and and Spark. Yes, you can combine this. I've worked on a Hadoop platform for many years where also there was Spark running and basically Spark was processing the data that is laying in in the Hadoop in the in the data store, but like, I think that that is a bit of an old school example. Time data, tools like Apache Flink, Google Cloud Dataflow, Apache Storm, or Apache Samsa. And Spark here as well. And Spark. Spark is, is also really good. Process data as it arrives. For example, Flink can be used to detect fraudulent transactions in real time by analyzing transaction streams and applying complex events. This, it says fraud here. Here and processing rules. Stream processing typically processes data directly from the data sources, data stores, yep. data streams, and applications, rather than tapping into the data lake. Yep. ETL it's because these applications, they are sending you the data, right? You don't have to request it from them. They are, they are going to send the data somewhere, and then the data needs to be immediately processed. That is one of the, the important things to, to remember here. EL or ELT processes are also critical to the compute phase. ETL tools like Apache Airflow and AWS Glue orchestrate data loading. And it's more Airflow and uh, I actually haven't used Glow, but Airflow is, is not for ETL or ELT, it's for organizing workflows. So because you usually you don't do the actual processing within Airflow, it's an orchestration tool. Ensuring transformations like data cleaning, normalization, and enrichment are applied before data is loaded into the storage layer. This is a stage where messy, unstructured, and inconsistently formatted data is transformed into a clean, structured format suitable for analysis. After processing, data flows into the storage phase. Here, mm -hmm. we have several options, a data lake, a data warehouse, and a data lake house. And that's what I mean. Why, why is there no, no transactional system here? Right. This is this is very focused on the hype things, the data lake, the data warehouse. Well, data warehouse is pretty, pretty old school, but data warehouse, the lake house. Why is there no transactional database? Why is there no simple SQL database in there, like a MS SQL, MySQL uh, database? 
Data lakes store raw and processed data using tools like Amazon S3 or HDFS. Yeah, data is often stored in formats like Parquet or Avro, which are efficient for large-scale storage and querying. Yep. Structured data is stored in data warehouses like Snowflake, Amazon Redshift, or Google BigQuery. Finally, all this processed data is ready for consumption. Various end users leverage this data. Data science, business intelligence, self-service analytics, ML. You see, this is this is that's why there is no transactional database here. This is very analytics driven, uh, very analytical, and not and not that much for actually the transaction for the user process for the business processes itself. Data science team use it for predictive modeling. Tools like Jupyter Notebooks with libraries like TensorFlow. But Pandas we also use as engineers. Or PyTorch are common. Data scientists might build models to predict customer churn based on historical interaction data stored in the data warehouse. Business intelligence tools like Tableau or Power BI provide interactive dashboards yep. and reports. These tools connect directly to data warehouses or lake houses, enabling business leaders to visualize KPIs and trends. Self-service analytics tools like Looker empower teams to run. Well, Looker is, is yeah. Queries. So self-service analytics. It, I, I always see Looker a bit like um, Power BI and Tableau. Without deep technical knowledge. Looker ML, Looker's modeling language, abstracts the complexity of SQL, allowing marketing teams to analyze campaign performance. Machine learning models use this data for continuous learning and improvement. For instance, Bank fraud detection models are continuously mm. trained with new transaction data to adapt to evolving fraud patterns. Yeah, so, so a transaction comes in, this ML will then analyze the transaction and will either flag it as potential fraud or not. And this is only done through actually training the algorithm all the time uh, on, on, on data. Now, the interesting thing here is most likely there is not a lot of fraud data that they can train it on. Right? That's the problem always with fraud detection. But yeah. And that's a wrap on the overview okay. of data pipelines. That's already it. If you like our videos, you might like our system design newsletter as well. It covers topics and trends in large scale system design, trusted by 500,000 readers. So subscribe at blob.bybyco.com. Yeah, uh, I actually follow the Byte Byte Go uh, blog. I have a, I, I get emails from them. It's really cool. They have a uh, email list where they send out you interesting th stuff that has happened over the past few days. And uh, specifically in the tech, data science, data engineering uh, sector. So if you're into data, Byte Byte Go is a really, really good, uh, good thing. I think they have this in their, let me quickly check. Yeah, they have that in their description of the video. So again, I'm going to leave a like here. Go to them and check out the Byte Byte Go channel. Again, they have really good uh, stuff, good resource for knowledge. The link to that original video is in my description. Now, let me know, data pipeline, what do you think? Uh, how do you understand the data pipeline? Is there something that we missed and also they missed in that video? Let me know in the comments and then see you in the next video.